All right, guys, in today's video, I'm going to do a follow up on a video I did earlier about just house maintenance, kind of the true cost and the lie of home ownership in America. Uh, the summation is from George Carlin. It's an American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. Owning a home is the same way. I do not see the pros of owning a home today. I really don't. Uh, even if you're going to look to retire one day and you think you're going to have uh, your house paid off in that, let's go there. You still have maintenance costs and we'll get into that as, as well. In addition to that, do you want to insure your house if it's paid off? And then you still have to pay property tax and HOA fees. And by law, if you don't pay them, guess what? Even though you own your house and have no mortgage, they can still take your house away. You got to know the truth, man. You really, truly never own anything. So I've been going through this. I'm going, do I pay off my mortgage? What do I do? Why is everything going up? Inflation is through the roof. The government is lying about the data and how everything's all happy and unicorns and rainbows and all that good stuff. But home ownership, oh my God, it's ridiculous. First, let's go with the interest rates. Now, the buy-in to get a rate, I mean, the rates went up to what, 7%, 8%. I think now they're probably about a 30-year fix is about 6%. But still, with that, house values are still high. They have doubled. So people now are kind of shopping to get the monthly payment. That's all they're shopping is the monthly payment. And they're getting these monthly payments with a huge price tag on the house. The problem is the house goes underwater. Sure, they got a decent monthly payment, but the value of their house, they bought it at $1 million. Now it's assessed. It, it dropped. The market corrected. You're down to 700000 Boy, that's not a good situation to be in. You're underwater. That's the term there. Yeah, you got to watch all that stuff. Uh, a lot of... Um, places mortgage companies that are pushing just buy the monthly and there's kind of it's kind of the game they want you to get the mortgage but they're just trying to convince you just buy the monthly payment like you're renting don't worry about the value of the house but yeah when you go to sell it you're going to be way underwater i don't know you got to think about that but anyway i've been going through what do i do my house is really high right now but i kind of stuck i got a 2.85 percent 30 year fixed uh, on the house, if I sell, where do I go? If I rent, rent's high where I'm at. Rent's higher than my mortgage right now. But we'll talk about that. That's going up. And uh, you got to move. You got to leave the area. You got to find a cheaper area to live. Or do you sell, take the equity, sit on it, find a place to rent that you're comfortable with, sit in there for a year till, till the economy and market collapse, which is going to do. There's just no way this can keep going the way it is. So you do you sit on it, get out of the house, take your equity, rent, 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 and then wait for the opportunity to go and then take the money you made off the, the sale of your house, wait for everything to correct, and then buy a house with cash and be done with the banks. And then uh, be done with the insurance because then you can be your own self-insurer and uh, be free and clear. But you're really never free and clear if you're in an HOA or you're paying property tax, right? They're going to get you either way. You by law have to pay them and they'll take your house. So all these variables, home ownership, living costs, it's just a nightmare lately. I've never seen it so bad. And it's been the past three years for obvious reasons. It's just, I don't know if it's, if it's by design to break the back of America or what is going on. Everyone is feeling higher insurance rates. They're feeling higher HOA fees. Uh, they're feeling higher property taxes. And with that, your, your monthly mortgage goes up. And if you're renting, it won't go up right away, but your landlord who owns the house is getting these same assessments as well. So most likely he will raise your rent. Uh, at the next uh, renewal on your lease. So everything's going up. Even auto insurance is going up. Yeah, it's going up mainly because the EVs, electric vehicles, those things are dangerous. They burn, they cost a lot of fires, they cost a lot of damage. 
uh, the high insurance rates on those vehicles is driving everyone, everyone's insurance rate is going up to cover these bad players, these EVs. It's, it's becoming a total, a total train wreck. Yeah, but anyway, let's just go through my little list here. Thinking about what do I do? Am I trapped? Or what do you do with this? What's the smart move with home ownership? Because the old idea that you buy the house, you have a 30-year fixed mortgage at a low interest rate. Oh, you're good. Don't worry. You got a fixed payment each month. They can't mess with that. Wrong. Why is that wrong? So say you have a $3,000 a month principal and interest payment right here. That's good, right? You're paying that to the bank. But with your mortgage, you do have your escrow set up. In your escrow, you have your uh, uh, balance that they collect in your mortgage payment for your property taxes to be paid each year and your insurance, which covers the wind, flood, and general roof and fire, stuff like that, right? Yeah, so you have all that in there. So P&I will stay the same. It just fluctuates. You're paying all the interest up front. It's front-loaded. They want their interest payments. Uh, that's how that works. But with escrow, every year, the mortgage companies will go through and they'll look at your escrow and say, oh my God, his property taxes have gone up 25%. His insurance has gone up 50%. We need to crank up his monthly mortgage payment to make sure we have enough money in the escrow to pay these each year. So the myth of having a fixed payment with your mortgage is all bull crap. It's a lie. It's a lie and most people don't realize that. So with that, everyone's property tax is going up. Most people will say, well, I'm paying more taxes and I don't see any improvement to the local roads, infrastructure, uh, services. It's all gone downhill. Where is this money going? Where is this money going? Is it being grifted? Are the uh, local politicians basically embezzling, ripping everybody off? I think so. Most of them are criminals. You never know where the money's going. It's inflation. You just don't know. I don't see any improvement in roads at all around where I'm at and the taxes have gone up. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a, it, it's a nightmare. So with insurance as well, a lot of insurance companies are leaving the state. I'm in a Florida and you're down to the state one, which is citizens. So everyone's cranking up their insurance. Uh, they're going up with wind, flood, roof. All of it is going up and it's going to be in your new payment, your monthly mortgage payment. They have to cover that in the escrow. So they pay it. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Now with insurance, it's a joke, right? You're paying in your premium, but you never get to use it because they made the deductibles so high that you never really reach that deductible. So you're always paying out of pocket to repair anything. So it's like you're paying for this damn insurance that you'll never use, but the bank and the government requires you to have insurance on your mortgage. So it's almost a grift. It's a con. It's disgusting. And they're just going to keep raising it. So say you do find a point where you're basically self-insuring up to a certain value and then insurance will kick in. So say you have an $8,000 deductible and you have, a, okay, $10,000 worth of damage. Okay. So you basically insured your house up to 8,000 bucks. You're going to cover that out of your petty little paycheck you have each month. And then insurance will kick in. Well, great. And then you're waiting to deal with these guys. They don't want to pay out. They're not going to write you a policy if they have to pay out. They're going to look at your uh, situation. They're, um, their tables and realize this guy's a high risk. Let's not give him a policy. But if they do pay out, you're going to, have to fight them to get that check. It's going to take a year or two to get your new roof on. Uh, it's a nightmare dealing with these insurance companies. They're all grifters. They're all criminals. Uh, yeah, they're just there to take your money. And you're not going to get anything for it. And guess what? If you actually do get your check, you may have to call a lawyer and then pay him lots of money to go after these scumbags. You'll get your check then the insurance company is going to crank your premium even higher, thus increasing your monthly mortgage payment. You see how it works? It's getting bad, folks. This is the worst I've ever seen it. I don't know how people are going to survive. If you're on fixed income in that or you don't make that much money, you're barely above water, I think a lot of people's mortgage payment is the majority of their uh, monthly expense right now. In the old days, it used to be, what, 10 20%? Now it's probably like 80% of your freaking expenses just to live. It's, it's gone so bad. America is done. I think it's over. The American experiment has failed. 
Uh, we've been co-opted by bad players and they're just destroying the golden goose. Yeah, insurance is a bad thing. It makes me mad. Now let's get, let's make you even more mad. A lot of neighborhoods have HOAs, which are good and bad. Most of them are bad because they're run by bad players in your community that don't know how to run anything. And uh, one down here, was it Haymarket or something like that? They, they were all caught on the HOA board embezzling money that you, they were raising fees, taking the money and buying sports cars and all this stuff. And uh, they all just got slapped with a misdemeanor. It's amazing. Probably because they knew Bubba down at the DA's office and Bubba was his brother and they let him off with a little slap on their wrist. But they were embezzling money. And uh, most HOAs are just corrupt. You gotta keep an eye on them. Florida has a new HOA law where they have to, they, they pretty much whittled it down from 62 pages to 16. That shows you who has the money, who's influencing the local politicians. Whoever pays to play gets what they want. So they whittled it down, basically where the HOA can, just has to notify you of meetings and agenda minutes and all that stuff. Whereas uh, knowing the uh, service providers are hiring had to be disclosed, like Billy Bob's brother runs the maintenance of the gardening and landscaping that he's hiring him and paying him top dollar from the HOA. They wanted to make sure they disclosed that. I don't think they left that in. They took it out of that, that bill. Yeah, there you go. Now you know. All right, with the HOA, you have the assessments, your monthly assessment. They're raising all those across the board. With that also, you have special assessments. They make special assessments so frequent, they also become daily assessments. And that adds to your monthly payment as well. So here you got your principal and interest is your base. Plus your assessment is your base. Add that onto your mortgage. Add in your escrow, property tax insurance, any increases there, that's your variable. And your HOA and special assessments are your variable. There's no winning here, man. They're just going to take the good people that work for a living, keep their mouths shut, try to raise their families. And they're just going to keep charging you fees because you're not going to do a damn thing about it. So HOAs are a nightmare. All right, now let's get into some more crap. Home maintenance cost. All right, this is another one people don't realize. Houses fall apart, houses age. Houses in America are built really poorly. They're built from wood and staples and cheap nails, two by fours, and they cut costs to save money. The builders need to save money by using um, less material, cheaper products, and uh, almost sometimes poor workmanship. So over time, your house will start falling apart. They didn't uh, treat the wood here. They didn't put pressure treated wood there and you start getting dry rot. Your HVAC was uh, not installed correctly, was oversized, the ductwork was kinked. Uh, it wasn't sealed appropriately around the intakes. Again, a lot of these guys aren't either good at their job or they just don't care. So having the ability to use your two hands and do a little YouTubing and figure out stuff, you can go mitigate any damages that can occur or failures of HVAC. Uh, mine, they did not seal the intake, and in one place they had the insulation touching the intake, so it was sucking the moisture into the insulation and staining the ceiling. So I went out, figured it out, I re-fixed all that stuff, caulked it, re-drywalled uh, it, and made a nice seal so everything is nice and dry and running great right now. Then I actually had a HVAC coming because the, the stupid drip pan was all corroded. I'm like, oh, give me a break, right? I had them come in, and they tried to charge me for a... a uh, what do you call it? A delivery, or what do you call it? A um, trip fee. I said, no, you guys, it took them five minutes to look at it. I said, no, I didn't pay that. But they went and charged a thousand bucks to fix the pan. I said, no, here's where you got to use your brain. I went out to Home Depot, bought some Bondo, which is body repair stuff for automobiles, and it works for houses. And I just coated the pan, sealed it up with Bondo. That stuff's not, not going anywhere. It stopped the house up for a few days with chemicals, but eh, it saved me a thousand bucks. But little stuff like that, you can mitigate your costs. You just got to use your brain. Uh, yeah. So HVAC is a big one. A lot of time they don't install them right. They drip. They don't set the. Uh, they don't set the um, floats right. The uh, on-off thing, and they don't give you the right filters. When you put the intake filters in, sometimes they give you the wrong ones, which are too thick. So it really strains the motor, where it's not getting enough airflow. And then that really drain, uh, shortens the life of your motor and puts us a lot of strain on the equipment. All right, enough of that crap. 
If you have a swimming pool, you'll notice sometimes the plaster, they did a shitty job putting your pool in. The plaster on one side will start cracking. And, you know, just like, oh, God, there's another expense. Uh, cleaning the pool, chemicals. Uh, your pump. Pumps are designed to fail, like anything. HVACs, laundry machines, they are built to fail. If they weren't designed to fail, companies would go out of business. They are made to fail. They can make them better, but they don't. They are designed to fail. All right, next one is any area termite treatment. Yeah, you got to treat for these little bastards. Here in Florida, these little termites will eat your house and you have nothing left. So we hired Truly Nolan. They came in. We paid out 3000 bucks for termite treatment. What a waste of money. Did not do anything. We actually had, in my earlier video, we had a little termite nest in the outside shed, which was attached to the house. He didn't even catch that, the inspector. It was so obvious because there was water coming in behind where they did the uh, drip edge on the roof where they attached the shed. It was kind of a bad design to begin with, but the caulking shrunk and the water got in. The termites got in. And that's where they built their nest. Thank God. It was hardy board. They don't like hardy board. It was just on the surface of the hardy board. And the freaking truly knowing guys missed that. It was, I mean, show me you're bad at your job by showing me you're bad at your job. What a waste of money that was. So there was $3,000 flush plus the monthly fees where they come around and just fake spray, act like they're doing something. Uh, it's, yeah, watch out for these termite guys, man. It's another, it's another scam next to insurance companies. But what we are going to do is we're going to tent the house. They call it tenting. You put a big tent over the house and they push in toxic fumes that can kill anything. We won't be here, of course, but I don't like doing this, but it's 5,600 bucks. Holy crap. So total treatment for owning the house for six, seven years now is going to be almost at 10,000 bucks. It's freaking ridiculous. Whereas if I rented, I would just call up the landlords. Hey, you got termites. You want to treat this? Then I, get, I guess what? I go on my trip vacation to Mexico and come home. It's done. You know, but as a homeowner, you have to address that. You have to take care of this. Termite's a big thing. With termite, you have damage repair. And uh, yeah, that can cost money. You got to learn to do it yourself if you can. Look for it. Know what to look for. And any signs of damage. They like eating softwood like... Uh, um, crown molding, baseboards, all that soft pine stuff they get into. They love it. They'll even eat the freaking plywood on the outside of the house that's uh, underneath your siding. But you got to really know what to look for in that. It's hard to find. But uh, the shed thing, they should have found that. It was so obvious. Man. I'm just really, really not happy with truly Nolan. Yeah. All right. And insurance won't cover that. It's not part of the insurance. My deductible is so high. It's just, I, it doesn't reach it. It's going to be just me doing the work. I've done most of it now. I got to replace some of the hardy board planks and then rebuild the side of the shed, rip out the electrical because I don't need electrical running there. So handyman, learn to use your hands and do this stuff yourself to save thousands of bucks. But when you get older, I don't know what older folks are going to do or just some people are helpless. They got to hire services. They're going to be more money to hire labor and even to get the uh, handyman and contractors to show up good luck good luck you'll be waiting months if at all if they show up if they show up at all and then they're going to charge you a lot of money all right dry rot obviously wood rots if you can with fascia repair and corner board and stuff like that you want to spend the extra and get the aztec board which is the polyurethane stuff and then you can set and forget depends how long you're going to keep the house but just get the stuff it's not cheap but it's going to last it's not going to rot and just cock it all up and then you're good to go. Now the problem is there, if you have a two-story house, are you comfortable getting up on a ladder? So you gotta weigh that in. I'll, I'll go up to the second floor, but not higher. I don't wanna fall and become a statistic. Uh, roof repair is something to consider as well. That's gonna eventually go. Shingle roofs last about 20 years. Metal roofs will last a while, but if you're in a hurricane or a high storm area, yeah, your roof may get ripped off. So you just don't know. Broken windows, I live near a golf course. Damn golfers love breaking my windows. Sure, they are liable, but good luck trying to track down a drunk golfer who's belligerent and just gonna you're just getting a fist fight with him. It's just not worth it. So insurance won't cover it because again the deductible is low. That's out of pocket. Yep, they even hit my car windows too. They broke a car window. At least that was covered. Uh, broken irrigation. Those damn things break all the time. It adds up over time. They're a little five dollar. Uh, spigot heads that pop up out of the ground. They break because people step on them. So that adds up. It's a pain. Just a nuisance. Broken lights, ceiling fans. Your ceiling fans will fail. Uh, lights will fail. You got to get up and replace the ceiling fans. You hire someone, sure, but you got to buy a ceiling fan. 
get up there and do it yourself. It's not, it's not that hard. It just takes time. Turn the power off to uh, the circuit breaker to that, to that uh, outlet, to that fan. You don't want to get fried. And buy a circuit tester too that tell you that the line is not hot. You don't want to get electrocuted. It'll mess your heart up, especially if you took the booster. <laughs> yeah. All right, internal water damage. You have a leak internal. It'll drip down, destroy your drywall, and you'll have to have drywall repair. Become good at drywall repair. It's not that hard. It's actually fine. Uh, in a way, if you like fixing your own stuff, there's easy ways to do it. You just have a, have the supplies on hand, you know? Just have them in a shed, in a bucket, in a storage bin, and just have it drywall repair. Boom. Same paint. Mark all your paint for the wall and the trim as well. Wow, that's all I got so far. But here is the maintenance stuff, the special ass assessments on HOA, the properties. Basically, the whole point of this 20-minute uh, video is owning a home is not a fixed cost. You may have the principal interest. That's fixed and your HOA fees. If you did not have an HOA, God bless you. You're ahead of the game. HOAs are mostly bad. I mean it. I've been through a couple. They're mostly bad. Uh, just watch out for them. You're paying for all this crap. And uh, it's like property tax. You don't even see the value in it. And it's run by people in your neighborhood that don't know anything about running uh, their own personal finances. And what else? So, I mean, renting too. At least you're not paying all these huge things. And you can only probably raise your rent a certain amount. So that's a good thing. And then you're free to move wherever you want. Right now I'm thinking, oh, if I move, I've got to sell the house. It's an anchor. I got to worry about that. Now when I go outside, I got I saw some more drywall on a front post. So now I'm waiting weeks to get a guy to show up to, to repair it. It's just a major pain because I can't do that myself. You need the it's a load bearing beam on the front porch, and I don't have the jacks, and I don't want to deal with that. So that's going to cost probably another fifteen hundred bucks to replace that damn thing. So it's almost a I hate the anymore. It's almost a, I don't use the word. It's almost a stressor every time I look in the house. I'm looking around for what's broken now. It's just it's just traumatic because you know you got to pay money to fix it or your time to fix it. I can do most things. It's just I don't want to do those things anymore. I just want to freaking go and do my day and not worry about the damn house all the time. Yeah, and even now trimming the trees, you got to watch out for that. Uh, what else? The rain spouts are they over? Are they clogged up? You got to worry about that. What else is going on? Yeah, the dryer I mentioned, the pool, uh, the railing, the fencing actually will um, dry rot as well. And everything's wood. Why do people use wood anymore? It's don't freaking wood. Get rid of wood for construction. Use PVC. You know, it'll last longer and won't freaking rot. My God, I don't know. I know it's cheaper. That's what they're going with cost. But that's it, man. That is my reality right now. The goal for me, I think, is uh, sell this place. I don't know when. Within two years. Hopefully, the value stays high. Take the equity. Maybe rent for a year until the market collapses like it did in 2008. And then maybe find a new construction where the builders are desperate to get you in there and pay cash for the thing with the money I made off the sale of this house. I'd rather almost buy, I hate to buy new construction though because you're in a neighborhood where it's always going to be under construction. The road isn't quite finished, noise all day, dirt, mud, construction, it's, yeah, nails in your tires, uh, not a good thing. So it's it's like, can you get in a... Yeah, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Not to think about that one. But the goal is probably rent. And uh, do you leave the U.S.? Do you go live in Panama where it's more friendly to Americans and cheaper to live and get out of this mess? I don't know. I think the country's done. I think it's just going to go broke and everyone's going to break everyone on the way down. Yeah, I don't know. It's not looking good, folks. I think 2024 is going to be a hell of a year. A lot of turmoil. It's an election year. It's a lot of... Uh, tension out there so i don't know prep up get prepared get lots of cash on hand get lots of food and water um get a reverse osmosis machine and get a battery backup for your house uh you can get one of those for like six to a thousand bucks man about 700 bucks now and it'll charge your stuff and it'll recharge off a solar panel too in case the uh, cyber attacks continue and the grids go down more money to spend on your house you know battery backup right you just don't know, man. You just don't know. Anyway, I wanted to go through this stuff to show that 
the old myth of having a mortgage, you have a fixed cost throughout the life of the mortgage. You do not. It's going to go up almost worse than your rent because you've got these high ticket items right here. Not kind of stupid HOA crap. That's, that's an annoyance that drives me up the wall. But you have these damn home maintenance costs, which will break your bank, man. If you're looking to save for a vacation or something, guess what? Boom, you got to go fix this crap. And it's coming out of your pocket. And it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling at all. Because money, to me, is freedom, is independence. When you're using that money, your opportunity cost of that freedom uh, to pay for this crap, and then all your equity is tied up in your house, you're never going to be able to touch that equity. You can get a home, home equity loan, but I don't want to get another loan with this damn bank. I just want to have no loan. But then with no loan, let's keep going. What if you have no loan? All right. Basically, you're getting rid of this, but you're still paying property taxes. And it's up to you if you want to self-insure. Are you willing to let it risk? Because again, are you ever going to use that insurance? No. Because you're never going to, you file a claim with these idiots. They're going to fight you for years, hoping they don't have to pay you. And what they're going to pay you is maybe a percentage of what the damages and repairs cost, right? It's Most people are going to self-insure or just let it, or just run the risk of not having it. Yeah, and it, with auto insurance too, people are just going with liability just so they can't be sued to death. And I, I think the smartest move would be also is to go and set up a, a, re, a revocable living trust. Put all your wealth in a re, irre, irrevocable living trust and uh, your house is under it, your assets are under it, your stocks, your bonds, your retirement, everything's under that trust. So if they come after you, they can't get anything because everything is in that trust. So that's almost my advice. And I need to pursue that. I looked at it. I just didn't want to pay a lawyer 1500 bucks to set it up. But it'd be nice to get everything under that trust. So people can't come after you. Say you're in a car accident. It's like, sorry, you can't go after my house, my wealth, because it's in a trust. You can't sue the trust. You know, I don't, I don't have access to it. I don't, you know how it works. It does protect you. All right. That's all I got, guys. I don't know. It's kind of depressing talking about this. When I was young, I always thought the world would be getting better as you got older. My God, it has gotten so much worse since the late 90s. Uh, it's all been downhill since the late 90s, like 2001. It's all been downhill. Everything's in decline, and uh, it's not looking good. The future is not looking good for this country. I'm just being realistic, looking at how much it costs to live and pay all this stuff just for your daily living. It's a nightmare. And don't get me started on college tuition stuff. That's another video. All right. I think the only hope we have is a lot of the content on this channel is crypto. Bitcoin may be our only hope. I don't know. Let's pray. Go Bitcoin. All right. On that note, I am out. Let me know what you guys think about home ownership. What are your options? Should you sell? Take the equity and rent. You can't really live in an RV either because the um, you'll get robbed if you're sitting in a Walmart parking lot and the uh, insurance on an RV has gone through the roof as well. It's a nightmare. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to sleep in a parking lot in an RV. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Maybe if you're doing YouTube videos, but even still. All right. Yeah. Post below. I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know. I'm trying to learn. I don't know. It just looks bleak to me. Cheer me up. Make me feel better. Give me some positive news. All right. Take care. I'm out.